Cubs are here tonight inside the Montego Bay Convention Center. And here we go. Tulane in green, Fordham in white. Tulane still alive for the championship of the inaugural Jamaica Classic. Yesterday's game, or two days ago, Cornish, who took that shot, zero in green, actually did a good job of getting his team started off quickly. This Fordham team, though, in white, plays really good defense, and they'll change defenses. They'll play some zone, play some man-to-man, -man, even play some triangle in two yesterday. Route the first shot of the night. Too strong, but back tapped nicely by Slanina. Tulane has not been undefeated to start the season in four years. A 3-0 start. A 4-0 start. Wow, what a turnaround for Coach Dunleavy if they can get this one tonight. Let's look at the lineups. We'll start with Tulane, and this is a fine basketball team in the early going, led by Reynolds. He's got 25 points per game coming into this one tonight. Fordham for Tavares. He had his career high here on Friday night. He had 18 against Florida State. Sure. Well, you, listen, they have been playing with a lot of confidence, and you see right now Fordham already kind of going to a matchup 2-3 zone right now. Uh, these two teams, I think, match up well with one another. I don't think there's going to be a similar response as we saw two days ago in either direction. Tavares in a scoreless game. Evans gets a touch. And Tavares again. Slanina gets us going with the fadeaway J, the young man from the Czech Republic. Yes, Sl Slanina has an opportunity to really display his ability to score inside and out in this basketball game was undersized in the matchup two days ago, but much better in this game. Frazier continues to be on fire over the last three games. My goodness, the young man has now hit 19 of his last 23 shots from the field. That is sizzling for Frazier. Tavares to the goal against Frazier, and he lays it in. Iceman style with the finger roll. We told you that you went for a treat with some guards today. Both showing you exactly what we were talking about here early. Ona Embo, their fine point guard, misfires, and now Tavares has an opportunity. His three is in the air, a bit strong. Both of these teams will run, Bill. We saw that a couple of days ago, but I think Tulane likes to run better. Let's introduce you to the coaches if you're not familiar. Mike Dunleavy, the former NBA coach. In fact, the 1999 NBA Coach of the Year in his second season with Tulane University. One of ten current NCAA coaches who coached in the NBA. Excited about what he's seen so far from a totally revamped Green Wave team this year. Well, he talked about when he was couldn't get back and actually get in the NBA. Spoke with a guy like Larry Brown and what that did for him as well. Jeff Neubauer, the head coach of the Fordham Rams, is in his third season. Rams off to a one and two start thus far this season. Coach Jeff Neubauer will be one of the most entertaining and energetic coaches that you will see in his practice. Uh, on Thursday afternoon, I mean, he was out on the floor playing with his guys, defending. It was pretty energetic, one of the most that I've seen all year. Here's Jordan Cornish getting it out to Reynolds. And Chartuni counterattacks now for the Rams. Maybe their most overall consistent player the last couple of years. Couldn't finish, but got his own miss and then had it stripped. Cornish's pass got kicked by Slanina, and it'll stay at this end. It's a much different start tonight for Ford, and boy, they got really shut down by Florida State's defense the other night. A little bit different tonight. They're able to run more of their stuff, and I know that Coach Neubauer anticipated that this evening. Well, they were like a deer in the headlights. They were shocked at the length of Florida State. You had guys that usually shoot the basketball extremely well to put up goose eggs.
Here's the run out by the Rams and the layup by Ralph. He was in the back of that zone. He was able to get the run out on his own. Well, he was one of those guys I talked about that put up zeros that can shoot it well from the three-point line. Fordham came out to play this evening. Jump ball. Possession for Fordham. You know, when you look at Florida, Fordham and the way that they played against Florida State, first half only 18 points, 23% from the field goal. And how about those 23 turnovers? Nine shots blocked. 17 in the first half they have a much better start tonight though bill because this team has come out they're playing number one with more confidence but number two they're taking care of the basketball here Chartuni down low and he may have had that ball partially blocked inside by Cornish yeah he's missed a couple of bunnies he'll be frustrated with himself Chartuni a much better player than that Good look from the corner for Reynolds. Couldn't get it to go. Tovarez counterattacking for the Rams. It's in essence a three guard look for both teams. Tavares out front with 12 to shoot. Slanina taking it down the lane on Paul. Into the corner to Tavares. Put him connect on the up and under. Jordan Cornish, who came in from UNLV, flips it over, and the long one is good for Ona Embo. Tulane retakes a one point lead. Ona Embo capable of scoring as well. Double figures in the previous game. Also, I had an assist to go along with that in about 30 minutes of play. Slanina on the miss. Cornish the other way for unbeaten Tulane. And another one. Three threes in this first half already for Tulane. Been in the 80s since we've been here on Montego Bay, Jamaica, but it's starting to get a little bit hotter in here. Tulane right now with some flamethrowers. Chartuni, the hesitation move, accelerates and scores. How pretty was that? Old school hesitation. Much different right now. Both teams kind of sitting back in that man-to-man. -man. Pretty basketball. So far, so good. Fordham played a whole bunch of defenses the other night. How challenging is that for an opposing point guard? Well, listen, it, they made Florida State think early in the basketball game, but once they started turning it over, they couldn't get the defense set. Ona Embo hits another long one. Tulane has four hoops on the night, all four from long range in this first half. I think Ray Ona Embo is a little upset that we left him out of the 2 deal. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the other end, Rouse connects. One of the many foreigners in this tournament from Montenegro. Route makes it 13 to 11. Fordham within two. Lenini gives it to his teammate Chartuni. Now Tavares down the lane. Oh, a pretty play. Will Tavares. Tavares showed us the other night some ball skills. That was an athletic layup by the young man. Tie game. Both of these teams right now offensively are clicking. Defensively, though, I feel like they're allowing the other team to be a little too comfortable. Passes are moving fairly easy. Oh, that's pretty. Good look for Cornish. Left that one a bit short. Now Evans and the Rams in a tie game. This has been a fine basketball game. We've played over five minutes without a stop. And Tavares keeps it going for Fordham. Yes, sir. Good usage of the pass fake by Tavares. And we have a timeout. Finally.
But before that timeout goes, I'll tell you what, Bill, we promised God. That man right there has seen it on every level. You think about the coaches, uh, Coach Mike Dunleavy coming back to the collegiate level. You think about Avery Johnson at Alabama, Larry Brown, the quick change that he made happen at SMU, Coach Cal and Rick Pitino both from the NBA back down the collegiate level. It brings something unique to your university. And he's got a lot to sell when he goes into that living room to talk with moms and dads or whoever he's Definitely. recruiting. He can flash an NBA Coach of the Year award at him. Six times, Coach Dunleavy coached a player that went on to the NBA All-Star game. Here is Owens. Out to Hicks. And it was deflected into the backcourt, but the shot clock will sound. And that'll send us to our second media timeout. The Fordham Rams leading early here in Montego Bay. <laughs> Big weekend for Coach. Well, it's a good game early. Tulane with the hot hand but it is Fordham that has jumped out to the three-point lead in the first nine minutes tonight and they jumped out into a two three zone more active zone too coach Newbauer not liking what he sees on the defensive end trying to shake shake it up a little bit and the Rams have numbers again this is Hicks out front Paris Hicks, senior from L.A. Hobson flips it to Chartouni deep in the right corner. Now Hobza. And a miss, a rare miss from long range in this first half for Fordham. Cornish to Frazier. They double him. He shoots anyway That's and tough. banks it Melvin in. Nicely Frazier. done by Melvin. Well, and, and if you're wondering how he's doing that, Melvin Frazier, he moves so quick. But he's 6'6 and extremely athletic. And so right now, Fordham undersized. He can go inside as much as he wants. We'll keep an eye on that. He was 8 of 9 the other night. He's 2 of 3 tonight. So he's been on fire here in Jamaica. That rims out and Cornish... The other way for the green wave. Going right behind Sayek to the goal, but he lost the ball going up. Chartuni for the Rams over to Hicks. Another three ball. That one's an air ball. Against the zone. Reynolds couldn't get it to go. Yeah, there's a lid on the rear. There's a lid on the rim for Cameron Reynolds here early in this basketball game. If you're Reynolds, you want to try to get something at the rim. Too long. 6'8", 225 pounds. He needs to try to attack the basket. Fitch turns and scores. Transfer from Vanderbilt in his first season with Tulane. A big, big impact for Shayich. Fordham's gone over three minutes without a point. Down by one are the Rams. Owens against Shayich. Now here is Chartouni. Hicks connects. Big shot. For Paris Hicks. And the lead seesawing back and forth. And Fordham retakes the 19-17 lead. Shayich tried to get the ball right back to Frazier, but lost it out of bounds. Well, you talked about the Vanderbilt transfer. Trey Evans. Shamir Sherich did a good job on the previous play of knocking down the jump shot, but a little careless with the basketball on this end. It's been a fairly clean game thus far. Three pointers, you can see. Tulane a little bit hotter than our four. Sherich is one of two transfers and two newcomers that have really helped Tulane. Second chance for Ohms, and he'll have a chance to go to the free throw line for two. There's Shape. She came in from Vanderbilt. Sphere here inside the Montego Bay Convention Center this week. Ohms is from the Bronx. 6'8 sophomore. And he misfires on the first free throw. 
right now. Both of these teams trying to find an advantage. You've seen Coach Neubauer, who's went to the 2-3 zone to try to mix it up a little bit. And Tulane and Coach Mike Dunleavy really just straight man-to-man, -man, but trying to turn up the pressure a little bit defensively. Second team foul. Checking back in for the leads Gordon with seven in this game and their top score on the season back onto the court. That's seven points in eight minutes. How efficient is that? He had his career high of 18 against FSU. That's a reach in on Hicks. For the foul is on number 23, Harris Hicks. One thing that Coach Neubauer was really stressing with his team is defend. But don't touch. Defend, but don't touch. Because a call like that can come back, maybe not big now, but in the second half. It's a it's a reach and foul that Coach Neubauer preaches to his kids to not do. Right. Defending without fouling is always a precedence. And mm -hmm. unfortunate. A couple of quick fouls by Hicks. That was point of emphasis number one. Defend without fouling with Coach Newbar. He worked really hard with the kids. In fact, he was out on the floor practicing with them. Shot clock's at eight. Not sure how that can be. I don't believe it reset, but Ona Embo lets it go anyway. And Hicks counterattacks for Fordham. Ramshot just 12 of 52 against Florida State the other night. They've had a better first half tonight. Although that's an air ball thrown up by Hicks. You jinxed them, Bill. That's all your fault. Rams, if you're watching. What's that Twitter account again? Yeah, I don't know that I had much to do with it. Sage <laughs> takes the pass from Frazier and the easy basket. Man, we're tied again at 19. Yeah, this was a good move for Sage. I think that he is thriving better in this system here at Tulane for different reasons. Sometimes it didn't work out. And going from the, Ace, or from the SEC over here to the American Conference, I believe he's going to thrive and be a critical piece and help the Green Wave. That's Trey Evans. Lost the handle going up. He thought he got hit. Right now, the Green Wave and Fordham both trying to pick it up offensively after a fast start. And Shedge right there. He's a good body doing his work early, Bill. Get to the spot first. Get to the spot per first and get your position first. That's the key. That's how they taught you all at Auburn. And well before that, a former Mr. Basketball in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. <laughs> Here's a long one for Frazier. And he misses badly. I like the zone for Fordham. They're slowing the green wave down. Now Coach Dunleavy's team pushing in with under six minutes to go in the first half in a tie game. That's Caleb Daniels, the freshman, and they cough it up once more. Chartuni to the wing. Tavares drew some contact, gives it up, and the three is good for Hicks. For Paris Hicks. Timeout for him. Coach Neubauer excited. His team leads the draw. You see that one, two, three green jerseys sucked in the defense. When you get into the teeth and penetrate, those straight line drives are lethally damaging for your defense, and that's what Tavares was able to do. Rams go back to the zone. They've been changing defenses a lot this weekend. Well, sure. We've seen man-to-man, -man, two, three zone, and triangle and two. Tonight, though, pretty much just straight triangle and two, or I'm sorry, straight two, three zone and man to man. Fordham foul is on number 24. Slanina commits the foul. First, foul. And the fifth on Fordham. Cornish will throw it in on the baseline. Reynolds gets it to go, but they say he pushed off first. Take the points Three, off the board. They're going to actually count the basket. Fordham foul is on number 23, Paris Hicks. His third 
I thought he pushed off at first. The initial call might have been that. Let's take a closer look. There's no way that's an offensive foul away from the ball. Basket counts. I don't think they called an offensive foul. Just a nice job of Reynolds moving without the basketball and having the focus to concentrate, leaving that follow through out. And that ties the game, and Reynolds gives the Green Wave a one-point lead. It's a four-point play. So we've got a little pressure right now. Green Wave not liking this slow tempo, trying to speed them up just a tad bit. The lead has changed hands seven times in this game. Chartouni throws it away. It's a turnover on the Rams, just their third of the night. And the ball goes back to Tulane. Yeah, Chartuni thought the Slanina was going to pop, and he rolled to the basket. As a result, he throws that one away. This 2-3 zone has the green wave stagnant. Not as much flow in their offense and settling for quick jump shots. And the long rebound to Chartuni. Ordinarily, Fordham lives and buys by turning people over. They've been in the top five in the country in steals. Tonight, they're getting it done with his zone. Yeah, anytime you can get stops, you're winning in the game of basketball. Multiple stops, that's another one. That produces a run. There's a steal on the deflected pass. Nice patience here. Slanina reverses the basketball to Tavares. Up and under. That's tough. Tavares does a nice job of not stopping with that first bump or the first bit of contact. Now 10 again to shoot for Cornish. The deep one is off the iron. Another settle. Right now, That'll the green wave to continuing to struggle with that zone, Bill. And while they're struggling with the zone, Tavares, that's the nine points here in this first half. And he's the reason that Fordham has a one-point lead in the final 317 of this first half against undefeated Tulane. You'd be amazed at how these tournaments for players, Bill, can help them gain confidence that lasts for the rest of the season. Cornish and Sayich, two of the newcomers for Coach Dunleavy's team. The left wing jumper for Slater is well off the mark and a foul on the rebound. Fordham fouls on number 15. Well, coming up at the half, it is 18 T at the half. We'll take a look back at Dukes. 2001 National Championship, along with stats, highlights, and more. It's all straight ahead on AT&T at the half. At the line, number 21, Here is Shades, the former Vanderbilt Commodore. And he makes the front end of the one-and-one. One. Coach Dunleavy's son, one of three sons, Mike Dunleavy, as you know, played on that great Duke team. Arguably one of Coach K's best. You probably couldn't pin him down to what his all-time best <laughs> team was. But if you lobbied for the 0-1 Duke team, not only many people would argue against you. Well, you got five. Well, Phyllis national, would argue against you. Yeah, you got five <laughs> national championships. I think you got four of the teams that would probably <laughs> argue against you. Football. Coach K, one of the pioneers of not only college basketball but our sport in general. Think about the gold medals. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be hard to beat that, that Duke Blue Devil team again this year. As successful as they have been, we talk about youth throughout the country. His team is still extremely young. Here's the throw in now for Rout. And the illegal screen on Slanina. 
That's the fourth turnover for the Rams. Well, this game started out with a nice flow offensively, right? I think in the first five minutes, double-digit points looked like we were off to the races. But since Fordham has went to that zone and Tulane has stepped it up on the defensive end as well, these teams have somewhat become stagnant offensively. Well, the zone has certainly slowed Tulane down, and Sage threw that one away. Yeah, tried to get too cute that time. Tulane has committed just the one foul here in this first half. Stratuni trying to play off Slovenia on the ball screen, but a nice defensive effort there. Stay with them by Slater. Well, they finally get the basket. What I'm looking for on this end of the floor against the zone, when you're facing a 2-3 zone, you need paint touches. If you just pass the basketball around that three-point line, you're going to have to knock down a ton of shots and hope that you're hot to be successful. Right now, the ball still has yet to touch the paint for the green wave. A deep one for Cornish rims out. That's easy. If I'm the Rams, I'll take that all night long. A low scoring but tight one here in Montego Bay. We've had 10 lead changes in this first half. Here's Slonina to Tavares again. And that one's too strong. Green Wave came out smoking, but they have gone cold in the last 10 minutes. Good block inside by Chartouni. And back to Fordham. It's a great job. When you look at the way this ball is moving right now, give credit. Fordham has continued to move right with them. It's not just a zone. Fordham and the Rams are in an active zone, Bill. Slonina catching it out front for the Rams. Their junior from Czechoslovakia. Nice pass from Sartuni. And now with 10 to shoot, Route has it out front. Chartouni for three, and it's good. Three for Joseph Chartouni. Chartouni gives them a four-point lead. After their tough game Friday, a huge bounce back in this first half tonight for the Rams. Now Tulane, the last shot. Reynolds left it short, but a nice follow by Fraser. And that sends us to the intermission. Frazier gets the tip in. That makes it a two-point game. His team will start with the ball. We'll be able to tell right away what kind of adjustments Coach Dunleavy calls for and called for in the halftime locker room. You want to see more paint touches against this zone, right? Definitely. Well, and, and open man to man. Sure. Just, just to cross you up. Well, Coach Neubauer, a very good coach. Uh, definitely good at X's and O's and mixing schemes, and I don't think he'll stand this man-to-man -man long. Violation. Paul turns it over on the first possession of the second half of the Green Wave. Here's Trey Evans as a sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma. Slamina gets it back to Evans. They've been very patient offensively. Chartouni pitches to Evans, who misses the three. Chartouni passed up a wide open look that time. He's got to be more aggressive himself offensively as well. Cornish ties the game at 29. Because hmm. Jordan Cornish is coming right back at you. If I'm Tulane right now, I want to be the aggressor big time. They become, they became somewhat passive when Fordham went to that 2-3 zone. They are typically the aggressors when it comes to this game of basketball. Tend to shoot now for Evans. Tavares loses the handle and his footing, but is able to maintain possession, and Chartouni does not get the roll. 
Yeah, he's struggling with his jump shot right now. Needs to try to get to the rim, get him maybe a mid-range jump shot to get himself going. Frazier could not connect, but a blocking foul is called. And I believe their head's knocked. Slanina is down. As was Paul. Ouch. It's good to see both of these guys get up. And it looks like the right hand of Melvin Frazier actually came down. Hit pro cops with Nina on the top of his forehead. So Frazier, who made his mark last year as a defensive player when he led the American in steals, will go to the free throw line for a couple this year. His offensive game has really picked up. 1.9 steals, and you don't do that if you're not the aggressor, but Slonina wishing he wasn't quite the aggressive one on that play, but he shakes it off, showing some toughness right now, staying on this game. Tulane up one. This one has a feeling that's going to go down to the last five minutes, doesn't it? Is that your prediction, Bill? Feels that way at this point. <laughs> Back and forth we go. 11 lead changes tonight. Here's Slanina draws the double. Nice ball movement. Chartouni can't get it to go again. Can't find it. And I like Coach Neubauer clapping his hands, telling him to continue to shoot it on the sideline. They call that a offensive foul on Cornish. Well, Cornish is, is, is an old-school type of basketball player. He's that guy that may have been older than everyone when he came to the pickup court. You know, maybe even had on some tennis shoes with dress socks. <laughs> Yeah. But would come out and win game after game. I love his old school mentality. Yeah, he came back home to New Orleans. Fans there know about him. He was the number one player in the state of Louisiana by the Times pick you in a few years ago. In fact, he hit a dramatic game winning three pointer in the high school all star game in New Orleans a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Chartuni, his rough night from outside continues as he misses, and here comes the green wave. Good look. Frazier, yes. Now you see how free flowing the green wave, uh, the, the, the way they're playing right now. Now I'm guessing pretty soon Coach Newbauer is going to go back to that 2 3 zone. Let's see if the tempo changes when that happens. Fordham has not scored in the second half. And Tulane looks to build on the lead. Cornish against Slanina in the corner. Here's Jordan going down the lane. And he had it partially blocked by Slanina. Two on one if they hurry. Big collision and the blocking foul is called. Cameron Reynolds with the right idea. But sometimes that offensive foul hard to get because of the Euro step. So many young people know how to do that now to avoid contact. And then on this Delay end, offensively, Corner's doing a nice job of drawing two defenders and route, not able to close out. Reynolds picked up his second foul on the play. Tulane has committed just two all night. Here's Chartuni trying to get his offensive game going. Slanina will give it a shot. He and he connects. Three for Pro Cup Slanina. He can shoot it. Knocked down a few in that LIU Brooklyn game in which they were able to knock them off. He's a very versatile big guy. And I think he's got a nice upside as well. Frazier lost the handle out of bounds. You know, these teams haven't played in a while. The last time they played, it was back in 1999 at the New Orleans Arena, Tulane and Ford. And it was the first ever sporting event at the New Orleans Arena. They christened that basketball court. <laughs> and now meeting again also on a brand new basketball court that's just 72 hours old here in Jamaica. That's right. Nice pass and the easy finish for Frazier. Hicks gives it up beautifully. There goes that duo we were talking about. Fordham switched to the 2-3 zone, but looks like Tulane a little bit more prepared for it.
Tavares with nine to shoot. And Chartouni, the young man from Montreal, passed up the shot. Tavares going to have to let it go. And here come the green wave. That ball was tipped by Chartouni into the backcourt. Cornish will maintain possession. And there's the illegal screen. Coach Mike Dunleavy upset, but the green wave. Tell you what, if you are Coach Mark Rich, you are feeling pretty good about that move from Georgia to Miami right now. What do you think, Bill? They uh, came from behind yesterday. They, after scoring a couple big wins over ranked teams, Virginia Tech and Miami beat uh, Notre Dame. They struggled. They struggled with UVA yesterday. Mm -hmm. Down two touchdowns in the second half. I think he's breathing a sigh of relief. They got a short week. They got to play Pitt on the road. That's never easy. Not over yet, my friend. <laughs> and they got Clemson waiting for him, too, in that ACC championship game mm -hmm. in the next couple of weeks. Boy, November football's exciting. Right now, we got some November basketball and. The element of surprise, something that I think Coach Neubauer and Fordham working on. They showed a little zone and then went right back to man-to-man. Chartuni -to -man. tried to get the ball to the wing, but a poor pass. It goes out of bounds. It is a Fordham turnover. That's just the sixth of the night by Fordham. And the ordinarily reliable Chartuni struggled a little bit on the offensive end. But there's still 14 and a half to go. Down the lane, Frazier. Pretty layup for Melvin Frazier. He did it so quick. Don't know how many steps that he took, but it looked so good. If I was an official, I'd just let it go, too. Tulane's lead is five. <laughs> Yvonne Routh. He could be instant offense for the Fordham team. Chartuni with eight. Down the lane he goes. Knights pass to Slaninia. And Joseph's going to have to let this one go. And he did not get it off in time. All right, so you're telling, Fra you're telling everybody that Frazier walked on this? Is that what you're saying, my man? No, I'm not saying that. Matter of fact, <laughs> I'm looking at it again and still can't tell. What I'm saying is it looks so good, I wouldn't have called it if he did. He just let it go. No okay. doubt. Tulane by five with the ball. Paul tried to get it to Frazier, threw it behind him. The ball pinballs out of bounds back to Fordham. It's a 12-3 run by Tulane to start this second half. And right now, as Fordham goes through this drought, Chartuni comes out of the basketball game. He's been struggling a little bit, but with only five points, but Hicks is a guy who's been a nice, good spurt for him to be coming into the game. Slovenia misfires on that. The lid on the basket in the second half continues for the Rams. And now Tulane tries to build on that five-point lead. There's Hicks again right there. And they'll tie that up. Jump ball. Possession Fordham. Fordham will get the ball back. The difference in the second half after Fordham's great defense in the opening 20 minutes has been the defense on the other end. Well, we talked about it earlier, right? Uh, at the half, they had nine points off of turnovers. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they have either eight or nine steals right now. And so when you are struggling, that's why people always say defense travels, because when you are struggling, defense can keep you within striking distance. Tavares down the lane. Good look for Rout. And the young man that set a school record with seven three-pointers last week can't get that one to go. Yeah, hit seven in a row. His first seven. Right now, though, Tulane starting to get their groove back a little bit. If I'm Fordham, the ball hasn't been dropping from the perimeter. I want something in the paint. And in particular, going to the free throw line isn't bad right now. No, not when you're hitting... A cold spell offensively. They're just one of eight from the floor in the second half. Now one of nine. There's another steal. They're going to get into double figures. In fact, they are. That's ten steals. There you go. Straight to the rim. 
for young players that are watching at home, when you're struggling, you have the tendency to want to just keep throwing up the shot or you get frustrated. Well, what you're seeing right now by Trey Evans, first of all, get some stops defensively. And a turnover is always better because it gives you numbers. And then go and attack that basket, make the defense foul you, try to get something easy at the charity strike. Fordham has yet to make a free throw tonight either. With that Evans miss, they're now 0 for 3 from the line tonight. Number 15, A.K. Hafsa, and number 33, David Kukarik. I give credit to Tulane. You said they haven't made a free throw because they're 0 for 3. I think that could happen to a lot of teams. Tulane doing an outstanding job of defending without fouling. They finally get on the board from the charity stripe. They'll go back to their zone to try to slow Tulane down again. Pretty shot by Reynolds with the left hand. And where did that come from, Bill? In the paint. Those paint touches always detrimental for the zone. David Pekarik, who missed Friday's game here, did not play. Now Evans out front. Evans gets a good look. And again, the shot's not falling in the second period for the Rams. Sure, but I'm okay with that look. You know, you could have shot faked and tried to get to the basket, but confident shooter, good stroke. You come back down and play defense. As you see now, the Greenway with the largest lead of the game, only six points. <laughs> Make it eight. <laughs> Shayich gets it to go. They're getting the ball. Possibly inclined, and we're seeing the results of that today. Samir Shayich makes the free throw, and with that, the lead is nine. Fordham has not scored from the floor in over five minutes. Looking to see if Chartuni gets back into this basketball game. A talented player. He struggled today, but just been a little off. Tavares gets Ooh. the roll. He and they needed that. Tavares. Well, Tavares has been there not only tonight, but in the previous game against Florida State. He's just got to get some of his partners to go with him. He needs some help tonight if they want to win this basketball game. Tend to shoot against the zone. Cornish to it couldn't get that one to go, but they'll get a fresh shot clock now. Always more challenging to rebound out of the zone because you're not matched up defensively. And so typically the five guys on defense have to really hunt the basketball a little better. Against the zone, the lob from Frazier to the dunk. Beautiful pass. I'm trying to think of who this guy reminds me of, but let me tell you, we will hear more from Melvin Frazier throughout this season. He's long, he's under control, he's skilled, and right now he's playing with a ton of confidence. At the other end, that one's off the mark by Tavares. This match is the biggest lead of the night for Tulane. Cornish this time's pass goes out of bounds. Jordan threw it up. Frazier knew what to do with it. Sure. Well, sometimes when you got guys, you got to wear which floor you throw it up to. Melvin Frazier didn't matter. 10th floor, 11th floor. He just goes and gets it. Superb athleticism being displayed by this young man. For Tulane, number 10, Caleb Daniels. Rookie Caleb Daniels comes in now for Tulane. He'll join Frazier on the court. He's a young man that the folks in New Orleans are real excited about, particularly those around the Tulane program. Kind of unheralded, buying into what Coach Dunleavy wants to get accomplished there. Daniels had 11 in an exhibition win that Tulane scored over LSU two weeks ago. In a charity basketball game, as LSU made a rare trip to Fogelman. Circus shot goes home for Evans. Evans. And Coach Neubauer is going to call a timeout. Full timeout, Rams.
They extend their defense now out of the timeout. Jump back into the man-to-man. -man. Well, they're extending it to make them uncomfortable, but they're still in the 2-3 zone. They're just in an aggressive 2-3 zone, which they're hoping will make Tulane make a bad decision. And maybe get a turnover? Not yet. That ball rolls Tulane out of bounds. Ball. It'll go back to Tulane. But now just eight to shoot. Well, what's critical is not just the, the zone and the changing of defenses. Like Coach Neubauer said, averaging 90-plus points on the Tulane Green Wave, they have to finish and finalize their defensive trips and possessions with the defensive rebounds. Jeff was a successful coach at Eastern Kentucky. John Beeline among his mentors. That was up at West Virginia when they were together before Coach Beeline went to Michigan. Remember, we've got a short shot clock here. And it's a shot clock violation. So Fordham gets the stop that it wanted. It'll be Fordham ball. 8.32 to go. Right now, both teams extending their defense and really making the other team get in the shot clock around 20 seconds or less, not leaving them a lot of time to execute. Slanina backing down his man, Sanch. Then he'll go to the line. Pro crop Slanina draws the foul on Daniels. His first team fifth. Well, they can help themselves at the line. Fordham shot just four free throws tonight, just one of four. But this is what we were just talking about, Bill. We said when you're struggling offensively, try to get to the line, get you something easy. Prokop Sanina averaging 12 points and six rebounds. Actually had his first career triple, or not triple-double, but double-double versus LIU Brooklyn, who we saw a couple of days ago. Slanina misses Fordham both, basketball. but Fordham's going to get a break. The ball goes off Tulane and out of bounds, and so they'll get the ball back. Tulane has now coughed it over, counting that turnover 17 times. Chartuni going to give it a look again, mm. and that one went halfway down and rattled out. That's tough. I've been there, Chartuni, where it seems like there's a lid on that rim, but he's doing it right. He's continuing to shoot it. The only thing he can do better is try to get inside, get to that free throw line, see the ball go through the net. Ona Embo with the catch and then a poor pass, but it was deflected out of bounds. We are at the Montego Bay Convention Center. Don't go away. We're having a blast tonight in the Caribbean. Ultimate competitor. Let me tell you something. He wants to win this game. He would love nothing better but than to leave this tournament 2-0 and and continue an undefeated season after only six wins last year. A short shot clock again for the Green Wave. It's deflected out of bounds. But they're going to have just one second on the shot clock now, Damian. Well, what you're watching for now is the offensive rebound. Everyone in the gym should know that this shot is going to be caught and go right up. Good if it goes, but it hit the side of the board. So it's a violation. Fordham will get it back there, still within striking range. They played it outstanding from the defensive standpoint tonight. Now Coach Neubauer needs a run. Well, the turnovers, right, for Tulane. There they are right there, 17 turnovers to seven. And then if you're Fordham, who had 23 last game, you're on the other end of it. Let's see who can take advantage tonight. Trey Evans to Chartuni. That's NBA range, and it's an air ball. Chartuni will throw this game film away. I've been there before, buddy. But at the other end, Tulane turns it right back over as the ball goes off of Shayich and out of bounds. They are leaving the door open for the Rams. They really are. This is so important, especially for young people, because oftentimes when the ball is not going through, you, you don't know how to score. There is a method to the madness, and right now Fordham not figuring it out. 
You don't just keep throwing up those shots. You got to be a little creative. Try to get to the basket. You got to lean to the left and right side. Try to get the defense off a little bit to try to get baskets in other ways. Frazier puts it in over Slovenia and the foul. That's Frazier continues to get it done. Well, right there, Bill, right? We just saw it. You know, he could have settled when he received that basketball. He could have shot the jump shot, but instead he attacked. He put Fordham and the Rams on the defense and as a result has a chance for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Checking in for Fordham, number 23, Paris Hicks. Evans will take a breather. And Frazier will go to the free throw line. Missed it, but he's got 19 and 11 rebounds tonight. And over the back foul on Cam Reynolds going for the rebound. Two lane fouls on number five, Cam Reynolds. His second, team sixth. Sixth foul on Tulane. I'm telling you, Damien, it's going to be close at the end. Eventually, these shots will start dropping for the Rams. I've heard you continue to talk about this crystal ball. I can't wait to see it over the next six minutes. They're just 3 of 17 in the half and make it 3 of 18. That was a good play by Tavares. He just didn't get the roll. It was, and I think he got fouled as well. Looked like his left arm was pulled down. Great competitor. One of those guys that you'd love to, to have on your team. Under six minutes to play, and it remains a 9.2 lane lead. Here goes Frazier again. And the freshman Daniels couldn't get it to go, and here comes Fordham with a chance for a fast break opportunity. Ooh. Tavares drew contact, but play goes on. May have lost the handle of the ball going up. Here come the Rams. This is Paris Hicks underneath, and Slovenia finally connects. What a turn of events. Both teams that time, ample opportunities to change and shift the momentum. Right now, if you're Fordham, a couple of more stops, and you are right where you want to be. Shea, it's a quick shot, misses, and here are the Rams with the ball down by just seven. Paris Hicks, the senior. Looks over at his coach, Neubauer, puts number five in the air. Chartuni squares the shoulders and left that one short. Yeah, and he missed Will Tavares on the side. One more pass, and he was wide open. Needed to make the extra pass on that play. Joseph Chartuni is now on the night. Two of 11 shooting and just one of eight from long range. But they get another steal. Their defense is keeping them in it. And Hicks lost the handle going up. To Tulane. Well, Tulane has had some opportunities, but Fordham keeps stealing the ball. We see a little pressure now by Fordham. My guess is it's just a little showing of pressure to take some time off of the shot clock. Looks like a 2-2-1, probably going to go back into a 2-3 zone. And that's exactly what it was. They just extended. And now you've got Tulane trying to get in their offense with only 15 seconds. Oh, to Embo hands it off to Cornish. Nice bounce pass. Frazier will go to the line. Like you said, he got to the spot first, and his teammate found him. Well, Frazier, only 205 pounds, which is good size, right, at 6'6". Six, six. But something that I like about him, he's what we call wiry strong. Doesn't look that big, but can take contact and has a tough mentality. He makes the first free throw. You had a chance to visit with him after the game. He's somewhat of a quiet guy, but he's going to end up doing a lot of interviews this year. You can kind of have the sense he's got that confidence about him now. Totally different player than he was 12 months ago. Well, in Jamaica, they say... The deeper the river, the more silent it is. You know, when you got that shallow water and you're hitting all those rocks, and then it gets silent on you. Is that what they say in the Jamaica? the deeper it is, and I think that's how it is <laughs> with Mr. Melvin Frazier here. Just because he's quiet doesn't mean he doesn't have a deep, strong mentality. Well, he's got that. 
Got 21 points now as well. Under four minutes to play. And Tulane will get it back. Well, you mentioned that Tulane only won six games last season. We've talked an awful lot about it. At some point this season, probably sooner than later, a score is going to pop up. It's going to come across the bottom of your screen where Tulane beat someone that you thought, how did that happen? Sure. Well, if you've watched them play here this weekend, and if you're watching them play tonight, you can see how it's going to happen this year. They've got potential. The only challenge that they have is when they face teams with a lot of depth on the interior. Don't have a lot of depth at size. Cornish, Cornish off the window, and it's an 11-point game. This is the biggest lead of the night for the Green Wave. This is good for the Green Wave. You know, they've been averaging 90-plus points. This is an opportunity for them to see. What a block by Melvin Frazier. <laughs> they call the foul, but you saw the leaping ability of that junior, Melvin Frazier, getting up off the ground, but he gets called for the foul. And Coach Dunleavy with his hands up on the side. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. And pick up basketball, you would have had two well, teams out there arguing about that until the sun came up here in Jamaica tomorrow. Tavares makes the free throw. You know, Fordham scored just 11 points in the second half here tonight. Break that time for the Rams. Turnover, another one. And Fordham has an opportunity. Hicks, yes. Three for Paris Hicks. Not over by any stretch of the imagination. It's down to a six-point game. A quick 5-0 run for the Rams. Two-possession two game. And right now the Rams go from a zone and lackadaisical to being extremely aggressive. And the Green Wave not responding well to it. Well, this is turning defense to offense. They get the turnover, and then they get the shot by Paris Hicks. Nice pass by the 6'1 senior. A nice job of knocking down that jump shot by the 6'1 senior out of Pasadena, California. He's been impressive. One of the leaders on this basketball team. When he comes off of the bench, he's energetic and productive immediately. Cornish makes the free throw. He's got eight points tonight. One thing the Green Wave has done well is make its free throws this evening. They are now 9 of 12. If this game in this tournament is any indication, they could be a good free throw shooting team. The guys that take the most shots for Tulane are the guys that are the better free throw shooters. And so that always helps when your high volume shooters are the guys getting to the line. Tavares gets it to go. Posting up his man. Yeah, he has a plethora of weapons. We're seeing the entire arsenal going to the basket. Little post, post up game on that play. Cornish to Sayich. Yes, with the left hand. Nice assist by Cornish. You're running out of time now if you're the Rams. You've got to start getting some stops. And this offensive trip, very, very important. But they turn it over. Here's Cornish down the floor. No basket, but a foul on the play. No and a couple of free throws coming up for New Orleans native and former UNLV Jordan Rebel Jordan Cornish. We talked about Chartuni just struggling today. Had the right idea, wanting to go right back to Hicks. And Jordan Cornish. You allow the green wave to get out and run. They like track and field here in Jamaica. Well, the green wave has a ton of guys who could be in track. They're pretty you fast on the open floor. Yeah, if you talk about the most famous Jamaican athletes in terms of natives, Pat Ewing is at the top of the list for basketball. Sure. But the heroes in this country are people like Usain Bolt and the, the track stars, specifically the sprinters. But there are a lot of young kids here tonight. This has been one of the bigger crowds of the event. A lot of the locals are here this evening. This is the first time ever that NCAA college basketball has been played in this country. Under two minutes to play. Almost a must score now for Fordham. Tavares in the corner. 
And he had a shot partially blocked by Frazier. Yeah, he's frustrated right now. But he gets the steal right away from Reynolds. And that leads to that layup Hicks. by Hicks and a timeout by the Rams. Not over yet. Rams hanging around tonight in Montego Bay. Several of the games are played on the mainland in the U.S. Seven of the games being played here in Montego Bay. Oh, and Embo gets it in and then gets it right back. Slanina and Hicks go for the double, but Ona Embo shows his skills and then kicks it out of bounds. Although Coach Dunleavy says it may have been deflected first, and the officials will get together to talk about it. Eagle Bay Convention Center at about 10 o'clock Eastern. The Miami Red Hawks and the Hartford Hawks. That's next. Quick foul as Cornish gets fouled by Evans. Fordham foul is on number five, Trey Evans. His second. And right now, foul. Fordham's going to need some help. You got a minute 20 left to go in this basketball game. You talked about it. You mentioned it earlier. Two lanes done a nice job of knocking down free throws. At the line for the green wave. For the Rams, they're going to need them to miss a few. They've been solid tonight, 11 of 15 at the line. Cornish connects on that one. Well, the key right here, make or miss if you're the Rams, is that you don't have to throw up a three-pointer. There's still plenty of time for you to attack the basket, either score quickly, take an opportunity to get fouled, and score while the clock is stopped, or penetrate and kick for a better look. Nice. So a nice up and under and one. Well, Tavares. Textbook. There's some young player out Tavares wondering what you do when you're down. Frazier, his third. Will Tavares he just showed foul. you. He didn't come down and launch up a three-pointer from 30 feet. He took his time, so maintained his control, and now has an opportunity to get a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Shooting point. After scoring 18 against Florida State, he's got 17 tonight, but misses the free throw. And a foul on Fordham with 104 remaining in this second half. Well, they're going to rue the free throw shooting tonight as well. The Rams are 3 of 9 from the line of this game tonight. And they trail by 7 with a minute to go. Yeah, Jordan Cornish, though, not a bad foul. 66% from the free throw line. Jordan Cornish on the line, shooting one and one. Five of six tonight, improving that free throw percentage. If you're the Rams, you're hoping those percentages pay off. He misses, but Cornish got the rebound, and he's fouled again. Well, they got what they wanted, didn't they? They got the miss on the front end of the one and one, but it... Karim's the Cornish, you know, go back to the line again. Well, they've gotten the miss quite a few times, but out-rebounded 40 to 23 tonight. Difference in the basketball game. They've had quality stops. They've turned Tulane over, but time and time again, just haven't been able to complete the defensive trip with the defensive rebound. Evans is going to sit down with four fouls, so he and Slanina each with four now with 101 to go. Cornish makes the front end of that one and one. Cornish puts him up nine with a minute to go. On the defensive end, Fordham got what it wanted. They had 15 steals. They've held Tulane. Well under their average of 90, but can they get something going offensively? Tavares maintained his dribble and scores. Well, Tavares. He went down, but he kept the dribble alive, and he gets the finger roll. Seven-point game. Chuck nearly walked, but he does get fouled there. What a tremendous play by this young man from Fordham. There's a song that says, we fall down, but we got up. <laughs> Tavares showing a prime example of doing that. 
could have lost the basketball. But look at his mindset. Look at his mentality the entire time. That look on his face. The guy wants to win, Bill. Change knocks home the free throw, though. The oohs and ahs from the fans here. It was almost a Globetrotter-esque trick shot. Now, 40 seconds is an eternity in the game of basketball, but they will need some help from the Greenway. Checking in for Tulane, number 10. Tulane gets Daniels back into the game. Remember now. Fordham has just the one timeout left, down nine with 40 seconds to play. Well, for Tulane right now, you realize that your clock is your ally. Just don't foul and secure the rebound defensively. Tavares into the lane. They're running out of time here. Route going to let one go from out the top. Yes. And the timeout. Three, four, That's the last timeout out of the game time for Florida. Not over yet. Six-point game with 16 and a half to play. Rhode Island, and he came up to show up for this entire tournament. Florida, which was third in the country and steals a year ago, has 15 tonight. They need one now. The inbound to midcourt, and Route has to quickly foul Frazier. Like that. Melvin Frazier could have Gordon caught it and tried to pass, but he kept his composure, just maintained his strength with the basketball. Very important to understand time, game, and situation as a collegiate basketball player. Melvin Frazier at the line for Tulane, shooting two. Two shots for Frazier. Tulane has done well at the line tonight, and Frazier up to 22 points. Caleb Daniels returns for the Green Wave. Daniels is back in. He's a good defender. Eight point game. Paris, six, and Fordham. They need points and they need them quick. Tavares, an off balance heave, and that will be it. Tulane is going to go to 4 and 0. They are 4 and 0 for the first time since 2013. They come down here to Jamaica.